Welcome back to Second Chance. My name is Philip Jones, kidney transplant recipient. And my name is Tafaro Cook, two-time kidney transplant recipient and founder of Kidney Care Coaches, where we coach people with stage three to stage five kidney disease. If you or you know someone who has kidney disease challenges and needs to be coaches, coached with the challenges, hit us up at kidneycarecoaches.com. Awesome, awesome. Well, today we have a special, special show for you all. A very uh, a nutritional uh, presentation by Jessica. You've seen Jessica before uh, on our conferences and uh, things of that nature. But for the people who don't know who you are, Jessica, go ahead and reintroduce yourself, please. Yeah, my name is Jessica yeah. Herlicka. I'm a registered dietitian. I'm also a certified diabetes care education specialist. Um, I've been in the field now for over a decade. I work primarily with people with diabetes, um, and I'm really excited to be here tonight. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Appreciate your time. You. And uh, so the floor is yours. Uh, take it over. Okay. It's not going to come straight in. It's going to pop up on mine first, and I'll bring it in. Okay. Can you see it? Uh, hold on one second. No, it's not up there yet. You want me to try again? Yeah, please. Okay, let me see. Yeah, it's the same steps as if it was like, if it would come up when you hit uh, share screen, but it's gonna come up on, on my first and then I have to bring it in. So still hit share screen at the end. Okay, it says... Hmm. It says, please update system permissions to allow screen recording. Well, if you want, you can send it to me and I'll, I'll bring it up for you. Um, Mr. Oh, wait, did this part? Go for a second. Oh, here it is. It just came in. Hold on. Yep. Okay. Whenever you're ready. Okay, great. Awesome. So yeah, so tonight I'm going to be talking a little bit about how to stay healthy throughout the holidays, some different um, aspects with your meals, some fun swaps that you can do. Um, and, you know, all considering blood sugars, sodium intake, but still having fun and still enjoying the holidays because that's really what it's about. So tonight I'm going to be talking a little bit about grocery shopping and meal planning for your holiday meal, even if it's at your place or if you're going to a friend's house. Um, I'm going to be talking about reading the food labels, some things that you want to look for, some healthy swap ideas that are still fun, still delicious, um, but can add some more healthy aspects into your Did she freeze in your Mr. Cook? I think you might have to uh, change the slide because she went through that slide. A lot of the foods are really, you know, beige. Oh, and, can, you know, hold on one second, Jessica. Can you, you froze for a minute. Can you go oh. back maybe like one uh -huh. or two slides? I don't know how many slides oh, yeah, you went um, through. Um, yeah, that, uh -huh. yeah, there you go. <clears throat> okay. Yeah, so I'm going to be talking about grocery shopping and meal planning. 
I'm going to be talking about reading food labels, just some things to look for, um, some fun, healthy swap ideas that you can do with holiday um, items, how to stay successful at holiday parties and family get togethers with your blood sugars, um, different holiday beverages that you can have that are still fun, and then also some tips for maintaining good blood sugars throughout the holiday season. <clears throat> Okay, so when you're building your menu, what you wanna think of is how can I add some real ingredients, right? How can I add some color and some vibrancy to the meal? You know, when we think about Thanksgiving, it can be a lot of beige foods, right? Like rolls and stuffing and mashed potatoes, which is fine. Um, but when we add some of those fresh fruits and vegetables into our meals, not only are they going to taste better, <laughs> but they're gonna be adding some <clears throat> nutrients, they're going to be a lot less sodium. They're going to add some fiber in there, which I'll talk about a little bit more. So that can help to balance our blood sugars. And then having less of those processed items are going to have a lot less preservatives and salt and fats. Um, also thinking about how can I add flavor to dishes without necessarily just adding more butter or salt. So that's really where herbs come into play. Um, which is perfect for Thanksgiving because you can add things like sage and thyme and rosemary to your dishes um, or with desserts. It's a great time to add those warm spices like cinnamon and cardamom and vanilla and things that kind of bump up the sweetness without having to add so much extra sugar. Um, you can also add things like lemon juice, different types of vinegars, pepper, spices. I mean, you can really make it fun. That way your food is really flavorful, again, without having to just add more oil, butter, salt, or sugar. Um, so a couple tips when you are grocery shopping for your holiday meals, um, definitely check out the sodium on a lot of those prepackaged items. And you may want to consider making some of these yourself or um, maybe using some store-bought, some that you're making yourself to limit some of the preservatives. But if you're looking at things like gravies, stuffing, soups, broths, all those things are going to have a little bit extra sodium in them. So you may want to look for no salt added, low sodium varieties, and looking at the sodium in and of itself. Depending on what you and your doctor have discussed about sodium recommendations for most Americans, um, it's recommended around 2,000 to 2,300 milligrams of sodium per day. So if you're looking at a label where two tablespoons of gravy is already 600 milligrams of salt, it's like, whoa, that's a big chunk of my day. Maybe that's something you want to make yourself. Um, also, trying to stick with more of the fresh or even maybe frozen vegetables versus the canned vegetables. Again, the fresh or the frozen, they're going to have a lot more fiber. Um, personally, I think they taste a lot better, right? They have a lot better texture um, mm -hmm. versus the canned, which are going to have more salt um, and a lot more preservatives in them. Um, also, check out the um, carbohydrates and the different added sugars. So something that I wanted to mention is just because a food item says it's organic or natural doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be less sodium or less carbohydrate or less fat than the non-natural organic version. So still read that when you're looking at those items. Um, a lot of times carbohydrates or sugars are disguised as things like brown rice syrup, evaporated cane juice, agave nectar, brown sugar. I'm not saying these things are bad, but if you want a lower carbohydrate option, and that's one of the top you know, five ingredients on that item, it's going to be a little bit higher in carbs. Um, be careful with things that are breaded because those will have more carbs and sodium. And then also check out the fiber content, which I'm going to talk a lot about fiber in a second. <clears throat> so um, adding fiber to your meals is really helpful because it can slow down digestion of the meal and slow down your blood sugar spikes. So if you've ever heard the term of adding low glycemic index foods into your diet for better blood sugars, um, for weight loss, for greater satiety after eating. This is what we're referring to is basically higher fiber foods. Um, so the glycemic index is something that measures how quickly your blood sugars go up after eating a food item. And again, those high fiber foods really slow down your blood sugar spike. Um, so adding some of these into your meals, which I'll show you in a second, or kind of swapping them out can be a fun way to add healthy foods um, without losing the flavor. So some healthy swaps, old school versus new school. 
Um, if you're used to buttered mashed potatoes, which we all are, um, you can always try something like some creamy um, garlic cauliflower mm. mash. Um, it's a really fun, all people will do potatoes and cauliflower together. If you don't want to do strictly cauliflower, I know every family is a little bit different on their preferences. Um, but it's really fun and you can honestly make it taste really good and it's super easy to do. Um, and when you think of traditional stuffing, um, most of the time it's just bread, unless your, uh, family does more of like a rice stuffing. Um, but thinking of adding more vegetables in that can really help bump up the fiber. So adding some mushrooms, adding some onion, celery, um, garlic, you can also do like a wild rice stuffing, which is really fun. And that has more fiber and more of those whole grains, which is really good for our heart. Um, thinking about sweet potato casserole, it, ha it can have a lot of sugar in it. And, you know, sometimes I don't know about you all, but looking at some of the recipes that my grandma used to make or my mom used to make, I'm like, wow, these have a lot of sugar. I don't know if I need to add this much sugar to get that sweetness. So right. maybe looking at maybe I can dial it back use a little bit less? Can I use a little bit more spices in there to kind of bump up the flavor versus just adding tons of extra sugar or butter? Um, things even like apple pie, you know, you can make it um, with, they have now these like um, almond crust or like pecan crust. You can make them from scratch too, but it is fun because it doesn't have all the flour and the salt in the pie dough. Um, and also some of the pie doughs have a lot of the hydrogenated oils, um, trans fats. So it's just a fun way to add some different texture in there, add some more fiber with an apple pie. Um, instead of a store-bought cranberry sauce, maybe try to make it your own. That way you can add less sugar. You can add some different flavors in there like orange. Um, <clears throat> and instead of the traditional green bean casserole, maybe going with fresh green beans or fresh mushrooms, just kind of bumping up that fiber. Um, and a lot of times you may notice you enjoy the taste even more. Um, instead of, you know, just a straight pecan pie, um, which has a lot of corn syrup in it, if you've ever mm -hmm. made it from scratch, um, maybe adding some fruit in there, some app, make it like half apple, half pecan pie. Um, my favorite that we do in my house all the time with mac and cheese, we'll add like cauliflower in there or broccoli, or we'll make butternut squash kind of sauce with the cheese. And it's really delicious. And you still get the flavor of the mac and cheese, but then it's a fun way to add veggies with different soups. Um, instead of doing more of those creamy soups or those canned soups, maybe sticking with something that's more brothy, something homemade, or maybe using a salad, um, if your family enjoys that. And then um, a fun one to play around with is instead of sour cream using Greek yogurt. I do that a lot for um, condiments, but you can also bake with it, especially if you like doing like homemade cheesecakes and stuff. That's really fun. Um, sugar, there are some good substitutes. I know everybody's different with their preferences, um, but maybe try reducing the sugar. There are things like monk fruit or stevia, which some people enjoy, or even if you use half and half. Some brands kind of have half and half. So um, if you would like the flavor, that can be a fun way to have something without all the extra carbs. Um, and then think about your appetizers too, or you can always offer to bring healthy appetizers to someone's house as well. So instead of having the traditional like cheese and crackers and a lot of breads, um, maybe having a veggie tray, maybe having like some shrimp cocktail, some different kind of nuts, just things that add more fiber, have more protein, which is really good to help um, limit those blood sugar spikes, um, but still just as delicious. And then again, like I said, maybe thinking about some of the sauces, can I make them homemade versus some of those store-bought sauces? Um, so when we're thinking about blood sugars in particular, <clears throat> which is good for everybody, <laughs> um, not even if you just have prediabetes or type 2 diabetes, um, but again, thinking about what can I start the meal with that's going to help me feel full, that's going to help kind of slow down my blood sugar spikes from all those delicious carbs that you're going to have later. So again, having some like olives, um, you can always have cheese, some veggies, nuts, um, things that aren't going to raise your blood sugar right away before you even get to the meal. And then definitely think about what vegetables can I have on my plate? Or again, offering to bring vegetables to someone's house as well can be fun. Um, so there's a lot of really yummy vegetables that come out in the fall. So different kind of squashes like acorn butternut squash, 
Brussels sprouts, green beans. Um, in my house, we do kale salads a lot around the fall. It's just a fun way to add some green, some vibrancy <laughs> to that dinner meal. Um, and then trying to get some lean proteins on your plate is going to be really important too to help you feel full, slow down your blood sugar spike. So depending on what your family likes, most people have turkey, chicken, something like that. Um, and then remember to eat slowly and really enjoy the meal. I think sometimes we get so excited about all the different foods and we just want to eat it all really quickly, but then we kind of lose the satisfaction with the meal, or we might end up over um, because we're not really paying attention to our fullness cues as we go through the meal. So really take your time, enjoy it with your family. Everybody took a long time to make it. I want to rush through the meal. Um, a couple things that I see, a lot of people will try to like skip meals during the day to save up for this one huge meal. Um, and the problem with that is, again, you get you can get really, really hungry and then you can end up overeating. Um, you can eat really quickly and then you're going to cause for this huge kind of blood sugar rise to happen, which doesn't really feel good because then you feel really sleepy and tired after the meal um, or, you know, you feel really dehydrated after the meal. Um, so also remembering to stay hydrated too is great um, just to slow down the meal, um, lowers your blood sugars when you have more water. And again, sometimes we get so excited and we're so busy throughout the day, we might forget that, oh, I need to stay on top of my water. Um, again, trying to chew your food slowly and remembering that after your first plate, it's going to take about 20 to 30 minutes for your stomach to realize or for your brain to realize that your stomach is full. So even if you think, oh, I'm going to go up and get more, give your body some time to digest, relax, see if you really need the second plate, um, because you may find that if you do end up getting the second plate, you're kind of stuffed and that's not a good feeling either. Um, and then definitely um, be mindful of food pushers and kind of have an idea of a strategy for yourself. So I know there are a lot of people that are like, oh, you have to eat this. Oh, you have to try this. I made this. Can't you just eat some, you know, really kind of honoring your body and having those boundaries of, oh, I'm full or, oh, I'm okay with everything that's on my plate right now. Or, oh, I can try some later. Just having some things that in your back pocket, if you have friends or family members that are like that, or feel free to take home leftovers so you don't have to eat everything all in one sitting. Um, and then with the beverages, I know there can be a lot of like punches and sodas and alcohol, whatever you and your family enjoy. So just being mindful of how those things are going to affect your blood sugar and your body. Um, <clears throat> specifically with alcohol, it's really important that you make sure your blood sugars are under good control before consuming alcohol. Um, it can actually lower your blood sugars later on. So it's something I would recommend testing your blood sugars that night if you have prediabetes or type 2 diabetes. Um, but also thinking what is in the drinks, what are in the punches, how is this going to impact my blood sugars? And don't hesitate to ask somebody, you know, is this sugar free? Is this made with sugar? Um, what kind of juice or punch are in this? And that will give you a good idea. I'm not saying you can never have any of those fun cocktails, but um, maybe you could mix it with some sparkling waters or some seltzer waters. There's a lot of great lower carb options too for drinks now, um, if that's something that you do enjoy. Um, and just remember to drink responsibly, <laughs> drink a lot of water, um, and you know try to have that water in between cocktails because too much alcohol at once can definitely um, be dangerous for our blood sugars. And a lot of alcohol actually can make you more hungry. So sometimes we end up eating more um, without even realizing it. So again, um, some tips for better blood sugars. A thing that I talk to all of my patients about is moving your body the day of the holiday. And I know, again, we're with family, we're with friends, it's busy, we got a lot going on, but getting in your morning walk or playing football with some friends before dinner or going for a walk after dinner. I have some patients that do that too. Just that movement that day is going to make you more sensitive to insulin. It's going to help you digest better. Um, most people just feel better when we're moving, right? Um, so definitely think of what you can add that day, um, even, it's, even if it's before all those festivities start to happen. Um, and like I said, really balancing your plate with some kind of protein and vegetables, you'll notice that even if you do have a meal that has a little bit more carbs, you can still have blood sugars 
on holiday meals, um, even when you're eating different things that you don't normally eat, if you're trying to create that balance with the protein and the fiber. Checkers is really important. I know some people with the holidays, they're like, oh, I'll worry about it another day. Um, but just keep an eye on it just for your safety, um, especially around any kind of medication use um, and just to know where, where you're at. And then think about your carbs. Try to plan out, you know, what I always ask my patients, what are your favorite things? Like try to include those on your plate. Um, you don't have to try everything if you don't like everything. Again, don't feel like you have to give in to trying everything because somebody made it. You can always save it for later. Um, and again, really paying attention to how am I feeling? Am I hungry? Am I full? Do I need to finish this? Can I finish it later? All those things ultimately will help your blood sugars um, because again, overeating can lead to highs and sometimes that can last all night, especially if you're eating really late. Um, so that was it from me. I don't know if we have any questions. I can stop sharing. Yes, that was wonderful. <clears throat> I really love the old school and new school because when I look at the new school, I'm like, man, that thing that those alternatives sounds just as good as the old ones, you know, especially you, the cauliflower mac and cheese. I'm like, I can definitely get with that. OK, that sounds really, really good. Um, one thing I just want to ask you what I want to start with, and I think it's so important is you said keep some color on your plate, because like you said, when you look at uh, Thanksgiving, most everything is beige and you make that point and I go, wow, she is so right. Cause you look at it, you got your turkey, your rolls, your stuffing, your mashed potatoes, whatever it may be, it's all that color. So I think that's some really, really, especially for somebody who has kidney disease or diabetes, high blood pressure. Can you talk about how important that is and how, you know, those fibers like can, can help a person in those situations? Yeah. Um, those different colors and those high fiber foods, they're really good at lowering cholesterol, helping us feel full with our meals. And also they're, they're adding a lot of nutrients, which are important for people with diabetes, people with kidney disease, you know, people with high blood pressure. Um, you kind of want to always make the most of your meals with some kind of nutrients, but they do slow down blood sugar spikes as well. And they just help you feel more full and satisfied when you're eating. Um, and it's really fun because, I know some people are hesitant to add some of those things in, but you'd be surprised your family might really love them and they, be, they might become those new traditions in your house um, and something fun that everyone can look forward to. Right, right. Go ahead, Phil. Phil? I was muted, sorry about that. Um, so my question for you is, what are your recommendations for, for substituting seasonings and sauces? Mm -hmm. um, definitely with the seasonings, try to look for things that don't have any salt in them if you can. Some of those low sodium spices or a lot of herbs don't have any spices in there. Just go ahead and double check the sodium content, especially on those pre-made seasoning salts, right? Those can have a lot of sodium in them. Um, and then there are a decent amount of sauces that have lower sodium. It's just kind of looking through um, the different options at the grocery store. Again, kind of going back to thinking about how much sodium you get for the day or how much of something you're going to have at one moment. Um, you know, thinking of, okay, if I can find a sauce that's like under 100 milligrams of sodium per serving, or how much am I going to be using of this sauce can be really helpful. There are some different um, websites online as well. I was looking last week. Um, if I think of it, I can always send it to you guys to, to send to everyone watching, but um, they have a whole line of heart healthy sauces and condiments, you know, even things like barbecue sauce and ketchup that are all low mm -hmm. sodium made for people that are concerned about their heart and their kidney health. Um, so maybe checking out some of those things and ordering some things to try, but definitely making some of those things yourself, especially gravy, that's going to probably be your best bet because a store-bought gravy is going to have a lot more sodium than if you made it from scratch at home. Right. <clears throat> Another thing you mentioned, you said the frozen foods and the canned foods. What's your recommendation on the canned foods? Because the, because the, can the canned foods have more phosphorus also? And people, some of the, some kidney patients have to watch that also. 
Yeah, definitely. Some of the canned foods can have more phosphorus. Um, sometimes even potassium they use as a preservative as well. So um, definitely, I mean, now there's so many options for frozen vegetables and a lot of them don't have any seasoning added to them. They're just the vegetable. Um, and like I said, a lot of people enjoy the texture of those even better because they're not as kind of cooked down and mushy. Um, but yes, absolutely. The sodium content, um, phosphorus and potassium. So yes, you can buy the no salt added vegetables in a can, um, but your best bet might be fresh or frozen. And one thing is, you know, if you're not used to cooking a specific vegetable and you're not sure how to do it, I mean, we have YouTube and you can figure out, right? I mean, it's, it, and vegetables aren't that hard to cook. I think right. it's just taking that time and learning. And you'd be surprised, fresh vegetables are super easy to prepare. Just learning the methodology and YouTube's great because you can watch it. I agree with you. And, and like you said, the information is out there and you'll be, you know, and when you look at the alternatives you had, if you take a little bit of time, you'll be surprised how good these are and you won't be feeling that overstuffed feeling that we have when we tend to eat so much. I just had mm -hmm. to say that. Go ahead, Phil. I apologize. You know me. I can talk forever. <laughs> <laughs> like, um, so not you, you Ms. Cook just asked you about the vegetables and uh, like frozen in, in a can. So um, now they have vegetables that come in a bag in a, fr in a freezer section that you can put in the microwave. Do you recommend it still being made in a pot or is it okay to put it in the microwave? I usually recommend if you're going to do them in the microwave, I would probably take them out of the bag and just put them in like a microwave safe container and kind of cover it, maybe steam it with a little bit of water just because of some of the, you know, heating up the plastics in the microwave isn't probably the best um, for those different preservatives um, and things that are, you know, getting into our food. Um, but they can still take the same amount of time when you put them in a microwave safe container, you know, usually about four to five minutes, depending on what you're making. So yeah, I mean, some of those options are good. And the grocery store too has a lot of fresh vegetables that are already cut, like green beans, they're already cleaned, already chopped. So all you really have to do is the same kind of thing, just pop them and steam them in the microwave, or you can use um, a pot too. Okay. Bill, we're going to go to a commercial real quick, and then we'll be right back. Thank you.
Okay, we have a question in the ch in the chat from Mr. Gregory Jones, and this question goes out to Jessica. He says, "Do you know how long it takes for your body to digest a typical meal?" And also, he says, "I rinse all canned vegetables to get the salt off." Okay, yeah, great question. It typically takes about six to eight hours for your body to fully digest a meal. Um, if you're about blood sugar wise, um, usually we'll see that rise like the highest about one to two hours after eating. And then about hour four, our blood sugars start to come back fully unless it's um, a really high carb meal. Um, and then, yeah, rinsing off the canned vegetables is a great idea. And you can also still use like a lower sodium item. Um, you can also do that too. If your family makes some kind of ham or like ham steak, you know, getting some of the salt, soaking that out of there. Or again, with like potatoes, if you're trying to get rid of some of that potassium, soaking them overnight can be another trick um, to get some of that potassium out of the potatoes. But yeah, definitely rinsing it off helps. It still will have a little bit of sodium in there through osmosis in the vegetables, but it definitely helps. Jessica, what's your thoughts on fasting? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I think fasting is definitely helpful. Um, everybody's different on how long they can go or, you know, with their different medications and things like that. But where I see the most benefit is when we're not eating really late into the evening, right? You know, that late night snacking, I think that's what really can start to obviously it makes it harder for our bodies to digest food, harder for us to sleep. Um, but it can raise blood sugars. It can cause more bloating. And then, you know, the problem I see too, is people wake up and then they're not hungry because they have this kind of like a lot of snacks at night and it, it can be a vicious cycle to get into. So I think having that cutoff time in the evening where you say, okay, it's time for bed, you know, really our bodies go on that circadian rhythm of that's what we should right. be doing anyway. When the sun's going down, we're stop eating. And when the sun goes back up, we resume eating. Um, so it can be really helpful, even if you want to start with just, you know, a 12 hour fast, you know, from the night to the morning, it's pretty easy to do, but a lot of my patients see benefits in their blood sugars, maybe with their weight management, um, even, you know, cholesterol, blood pressure, if they're eating a lot of those snacks. I, I fast, um, like my, my clock is, uh, 11 o'clock in the morning. I won't eat anything till seven at night. And mm -hmm. do you fast or what do you do? And I'm talking about intermittent fasting is what I'm talking about. Yeah. Yeah. I kind of listen to my body. And when I'm first hungry in the morning, it's usually anywhere from, yeah, like 10 to 11. And then I definitely don't, you know, snack after dinner. But I think also too, making sure that that last meal of the day is something that is going to keep you full, you know, something that has right. the fiber and the veggies, some kind of protein, you know, something that's satisfying. That way you don't really need, you know, to snack at night. Right, right. Go ahead, Phil. You two are better than me because I wake up hungry. So <laughs> it's like okay. that might be your body. Eyes open. It's like all right. What am I going to go eat? I'm hungry. Um. So you mentioned uh, having different kind of nuts and things like that with uh and and appetizers. What kind of uh, nuts would be good for somebody with a low potassium, or low phosphorus diet? Yeah, it's tricky. There's some different um, seeds that are a little bit lower in um, potassium. Um, I think it's more so just limiting the quantity and then maybe not having the nuts with added salts on them too, you know, just kind of getting plain um, nuts and seeds, but um, a little bit is okay. Um, so yeah, I'd have to like look at the charts to know off the top of my head <laughs> the exact amount. Um, but yeah, I think just limiting the quantity and, and the unsalted versions. You 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 talked about one food that I forgot that I love a lot and I haven't even thought about eating it because I used to, I like a variety of foods. And you talked about wild rice. And I was like, oh my goodness, I used to eat wild rice all the time. I'm gonna start putting it in my, you know, my food category because it's such a great food and it's a it's a good rice, it's fiberish and everything. And and that's one that people forget. And it has a, it has really good flavor for a rice, you know. So yeah. I just wanted to make that statement. But let's talk about something that's very, very important. And you brought it up earlier is 
slowing down and chewing your food. And can you talk about the how important that is to your digestive system? We see a lot of people just gulp their food. And I'm like, Dad, did you enjoy it? And I'm looking at them like, gosh. And my dad was a stickler of eating really, really slow. And let's just let, let you elaborate on that. Go ahead. Yeah, well, that's awesome that if your dad taught you that or had that yeah. in the house, because that's a great habit to get into. But yeah, yeah you know, when we're, we're tending to eat really quickly, like you said, we're losing that pleasure and that enjoyment of the meal. And sometimes we end up snacking afterwards because we didn't have that connection with our food, which is really yeah. important. And I think, too, sometimes even GI issues can happen when people are gulping down their food because it's a lot of air. You're not chewing your food all the way. So if you're having like bloating or gas or cramping after eating, chewing your food can definitely help. Um, but it really just adds more pleasure and helps you connect with your fullness, right? Because it does take a while for our brain to realize that our stomach is full. So when we're chewing and we're slowing down the meal, um, you'll start to notice those fullness cues um, coming in a little bit better, which is really helpful. So like I said, you don't rush off and get a second food um, when maybe your body was okay with the first plate of food. And it's just really important. We have so much, um, you know, distracted eating now and we're eating different things. So especially like a holiday, I mean, that's the time you want to hang out. You want to enjoy your family, your friends, talk, relax. You don't need to rush through the meal. <laughs> I totally agree with you because, you know, the, the socialization of, you know, sitting down with a plate, talking, interacting with each other and then enjoying your food is is awesome. Opposed to just, OK, I'm just going to scarf and, and then feeling like crap, because one thing I noticed is the ones that eat real fast have a stomach ache. They're bent over, got to go to the restroom. And, and, and the ones that slow down, like um, prime example, my wife is like a she's like a, a what you call a. Um, so, uh, a grazer. She eat a little bit, run her mouth. So we eat a little bit, eat a little bit, eat a little bit here and there. And and when you see people eat like that, they're mostly you know a lot thinner, just naturally because they just graze a little bit, and they end up like you said, they're socializing so much that they eat just one plate of food, and it's good. You know, might get something later on, but they don't eat a whole consume a whole bunch at one time. And I think. When you do consume a lot of food at one time, and I used to be a personal trainer, I trained bodybuilders, girl, fitness girls, all types of stuff, is we used to space out their meals, you know, to, uh, once every two hours. And when you eat a lot, you put the fire of the metabolism out. You stuff it. You just slow everything down in your body. And that's why you see the people like, oh, I can't eat another bite and feel terrible, opposed to you know, slowing down, eating your food and letting, you know, eating just enough where your metabolism can burn and you still can be active and, you know, things like that. Definitely. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. So Phil. you, you mentioned earlier that alcohol can raise or lower your blood sugar. And I, I'm not sure if Ms. Cook knew that, but I know I didn't know that we've gone over blood sugar a number of times. Mm -hmm. um, in this past year and a half uh, that we've been working together. And that was one thing that was not anything that we read. Um, so I, I just want to know, when do you recommend that somebody checks their blood sugar before and after consumption of alcohol? Yeah, I mean, definitely checking it before just to get a baseline of where you're at. And it can depend on the person. It can depend on your medications. Um, but if your blood sugar is on the lower side and you are going to have um, specifically liquor is the um, type of alcohol that does drop our blood sugars the most. Um, you want to make sure that you're at a good range so you don't go low very quickly. And it's really important when you're consuming alcohol that you are consuming food at the same time. Um, so that doesn't happen. Um, checking your blood sugars two hours after the meal is really good um, just to see where you're at. And then I definitely re recommend a blood sugar check before bed, before you go to sleep, because if your blood sugars are, are going low, then you might need where you go to bed. 
One other good point you, you made up, and this is something I would do uh, before Thanksgiving, Christmas time, those great big meals is I would always go to the gym early in the morning, you know, get a little, you know, whatever it may be, maybe a, a resistance workout, maybe just some step meal or something like that. But just get myself, you know, going a little bit. And I don't know, maybe it helped me not feel so guilty of eating all the food I was going to eat. <laughs> but one thing I noticed was my body always worked better and I could rebound the next day and just feel normal. So let's talk about that. Let's talk about the movement and how important that is. Yeah, it's really important because the longer we're sitting, the more our insulin resistance starts to build up. And especially for people with diabetes, they may notice their blood sugar is going higher, especially if you're doing a lot of traveling around the um, holidays, <clears throat> that can be a lot of sitting. And then that in and of itself can make your blood sugars higher. So when you're moving your body, you're going to naturally become more sensitive to insulin, which means that the insulin that your body is creating is going to work better. Um, and so, you know, it can also help somewhat to control appetite levels, even though I think a lot of people think, okay, when you work out, you're going to be more and more hungry, but there's a lot of studies that show that appetite regulation is better when people are more active and moving their bodies throughout the day. Um, and like you said, you just kind of feel better. Um, and it's a nice way if you are hanging out with family, you know, go for a walk together, or like you said, go to the gym, play football, you know, something fun. Um, it can really make a dig big difference in how you feel. So my, my question for you, and this is actually my, my last question that I have on my list of questions. Um, what does Jessica's plate look like on Thanksgiving or Christmas? <laughs> okay. Yeah, well, one thing about me is I actually, and so I don't eat any kind of meat. So you're probably not going to find that on my plate. <laughs> um, but we do have, uh, we always have some kind of salad. Um, we will have the appetizers, kind of like the things that I mentioned, like different veggies and things like that. Um, but yeah, I mean, I really love mac and cheese. Um, last year for Thanksgiving, we made like spicy grits, which is really fun. My dad's from Louisiana, so we really enjoyed that. Um, but yeah, we try to make, switch it up with different salads or Brussels sprouts or um, sweet potatoes, you know, different things like that, which are really fun. Um, and as we've added more veggies in every year, you know, it's fun for the family too to try out different things. Yeah, I used to hate uh, Brussels sprouts when I was younger because I think my mom just boiled them or whatever. But I love them on the grill now when somebody grills them with the garlic and stuff. <laughs> it just like asparagus and stuff like that. I love that stuff when it's grilled. It tastes, it gives it a whole new meaning of how it tastes. But um, the last question I have for you is, um, and we kind of talked about it, but I want to go a little bit more in depth of portion control, you know, paying attention to it and how important it is. And uh, talking about, you know, giving your body that time and that signal to let you know, oh, is it okay to get some more food? I can always take some home and enjoy it the next day. So let's talk about that a little bit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And um, I think portion control, it definitely takes practice if that's something that you're really trying to work on um, because sometimes in the beginning it can feel a little bit uncomfortable but the more you kind of check in mentally with how is my stomach feeling how am i feeling am i feeling full i think also too just looking at how much you're putting on your plate i think sometimes we get so excited that we just put so much on our plate and then you feel compelled to eat it all and really you know if you start out with a smaller plate or just you know normal portions you're going to get a bite of everything you're going to have everything um but then you won't have that overstuffed feeling. And it's really fun with a lot of my patients. We just try to move them down to smaller plates and they start noticing, like, just like you mentioned before, I don't feel like, Oh, my stomach hurts after eating. I don't feel like I need to take a nap after eating. I feel good. I feel like I can go do something and hang out and have fun. Um, so it is really important with the, the portions feeling during the meal. And you can kind of just start by doing like, the size of the palm of your hand with different portions, if that helps you kind of eyeball it or taking, you know, one scoop instead of two, just to see how you feel with those meals. That's, that's so important, man. Uh, portion size, um, even, even to the point where, you know, like you said, one thing is really important where, 
uh, your favorite aunt might bring some food over and she goes, I want you to try this. And she tries it and she throws it on your plate and you tie it. And, you, and we all ran into this. You'd be like, I ain't feeling that. And it's still on your plate. It's the last thing. And she's sitting there like, is it good? You'd be like, no. <laughs> so you try to ease to the trash can, try to throw it away or give it to the dog or something, you know? <laughs> so if you got a small plate, she can only give you a little bit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, man. I don't have any more questions. I just wanted to make that little silly uh, statement. But uh, <laughs> thank you for your time and thank you for the old school and new school because I wrote some things down like, okay, I'm trying that. So <laughs> that was really, really informative right there. Yeah, I'm like, because I'm that guy right there, definitely going to try some of these new schools for sure. But, but uh, go ahead, Phil, wrap it up. And thank you again, Jessica. We appreciate you. Yeah. Yeah, thank you, Jessica. Very informative. I'm definitely going to go back and watch this before next Thursday because if I don't, I will be the one with a thousand things on this plate on the first try. So <laughs> I, <laughs> I need to go back and take some notes and make it, you know, uh, imprint in my brain so I, I remember it. Um, but again, thank you very much for your time. We appreciate you. Um, you'll definitely be hearing from us again. We got other conference coming up in March. So. Uh, we'll definitely be coming back to you uh, for sure. So um, everybody have a great night. Everybody have a safe weekend. And we'll see you all on Sunday. Thank you. Bye, guys. Bye-bye.